this week's video, we're doing the figure eight cast on. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. And if you saw last week's video on the Turkish cast on, you can jump right to the demonstration because this next bit will be a repeat. The figure eight cast on is a provisional cast on that can also be used as a closed cast on. A provisional cast on is a method of establishing live stitches on the needle, usually with waist yarn, but not always. And then the knitting is begun working away from the starting point. Later, the knitter returns to the starting point, the waist yarn is removed and the live stitches are recaptured. They can then be bound off, grafted to another set of live stitches, or they can be worked in the opposite direction of the original knitting. A closed cast on is also a method of starting a project without an edge, but you work away from that starting point in both directions at the same time. This sort of cast on is frequently used to begin toe up socks and it's essentially the opposite of grafting. There are at least three provisional cast on methods that can also easily be used as a closed cast on. The Turkish cast on, the figure eight cast on, and Judy's magic cast on. Last week I demonstrated the Turkish cast on, so let's get started on the figure eight cast on. To use the figure eight cast on as a provisional cast on, you're going to need a circular needle and you're going to need your project needle. So the bottom needle will be a circular needle and the top needle will be your project needle. Uh, this means it could, this top needle could be a straight needle, a double pointed needle, or another circular needle, just depending on what your project requires. The tips should both be the same diameter. So to start, you need to make a slip knot and place it on your bottom needles. Hold the two needles parallel with the tips pointing to the right and get the tail out of the way so you can tell what's going on. Now you're going to wrap the yarn around the needles by bringing the working yarn behind the needles over the top and then between the two needles. So I'm going to use my index finger to hold this loop on while I slide it between the two needles. So now I have one loop on the top needle. The slip knot does not count as a stitch. Now I'm going to wrap around the bottom needle and again I'm going to put my index finger against it while I bring the yarn between the two needles. So if I need to cast on provisionally for 10 stitches, I need 10 loops on each needle. I've got one so far. So again, I bring it over the top, then between, and then around, and between. Now I've got two on each needle because the slip knot does not count. Three, three, four, four, So the last stitch you're going to bring around the bottom and you're going to end in between the two needles. Then you're going to just count to make sure you have the right number. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I have ten. So the cast on is complete. So now you need to work the first uh, few rows or rounds to get established. So I'm going to keep some tension on this yarn. I'm going to hold it in that hand. I'm going to pull the bottom needle out of the stitches so that those stitches are resting on the cable. So from now on, these stitches will just be resting on the circular needle until I need to return to the starting point and then do something with those stitches. So from now on, I'm only going to be uh, dealing with this top needle until I bind off or do something with to, to finish um, my knitting that's going on on this needle. So to start with, if I am using uh, double pointed needles or straight needle, I'd go get another project needle so that I could work across here. If you're using a circular needle across the top, you're going to grab the other end of that circular needle and you're going to work across. So tension the yarn however you tension it in order to work stitches. So at this point I finished the first set of stitches. I've worked across the stitches once and if I'm working flat then I'm going to continue working back and forth just across these stitches. 
if I'm going to be working the stitches I've cast on on the top needle in the round, then this is when I would join the, um, this end coming around to this end. So this is less likely with the, this number of stitches, but if I had say 100 stitches for a hat, then I could join them in the round. So now I finished uh, my second row of stitches and you can see that I actually have uh, one actual row of stitches between the two needles. I've got loops on the needle here, loops on the needle here, and then I have one row of stitches between the two needles. From now on, every time I work a row of stitches, I'll get another row below the needle, but just for the cast on, it takes two passes to create one full row between the two needles. Okay, so I worked for a few more rows and then I'm just binding these off so you can see what it looks like to work in the other direction. So at this point, we can return to these stitches that have been sitting on the needle waiting for us. I want to slide them onto the needle and we can just let this slip knot, remember that's not a stitch, we can let that one off the needle right now. The Turkish cast on, we wanted to wait um, till we'd worked that first stitch just because um, the Turkish cast on loops aren't as interconnected, but the figure eight cast on allows you to just let that slip not come off. So now we can either bind these stitches off or we can graft them to another set of live stitches or we can work in the other direction. So, um, and we can, we, can, we can start with the right side facing us or we could start at the other end because we have to join the yarn no matter what, uh, we can start it at either end. So we have the stitches on the needle and we're ready to work them. But with the figure eight cast on, the stitches that are on the bottom needle, because of the way the yarn was wrapped, are sitting opposite of the way we would normally need to knit the needles, or knit the stitches. That is, if you look at the stitch, you can see how um, we have one leg over the front of the, of the needle, one over the back, and the one over the back of the needle is the one closest to the tip. That's called the leading leg. And in order to knit stitches so that they are not twisted, you need to knit into the leading leg. So um, normally our leading leg is over the front of the needle so we can knit through the front. But if the leading leg is over the back, we have to insert our needle through the back. Now I'm going to knit through the back of each of these stitches. So again, you can see how it's sitting on the needle with the leading leg toward the tip. So I'm always want to push against the leading leg. If you were going to graft these stitches instead of knitting them or binding them off, you might want to reseat them on the needle um, because grafting off the needles while you're dealing with the different way it's sitting is not my idea of fun thing to do. And again, you get to this last one and it already looks twist. It looks twisted. So you want to make sure that you still are maintaining this little twist by knitting through the back. And what you'll see is that this row of stitches that's right under the needle after we've worked across the second one is larger than the rest of the stitches. For closed circular cast on, we're going to use two circular needles that are the same size. We're going to start with a slip knot, place that on the lower needle and tighten it up. We're gonna get that tail, we're gonna get this tail out of the way grab onto the working end. Now, when you do a closed circular cast on, every loop on both needles counts as a stitch. So if your pattern tells you to cast on 20 stitches, like say you're doing a toe-up sock, so you have to cast on 20 stitches, 10 on each needle, because you will be knitting all of those stitches every round. So you grab the working end of the yarn and you wrap it around the back of the needle, over the top, and then between the two needles. So I put my index finger to hold that loop while I slide it between the two needles. Then I wrap around the bottom. Again, I put my index finger pressed up against it so that I can go in the center. Now we've done one stitch on each needle. That slip knot does not count as a stitch. So you're gonna continue wrapping around this way, over the top, between, under the bottom, and then between, again and again. So we've got two on each needle, three, three, four, four. 
And the last one ends when you wrap around and end between the two needles. So you're going to hold on to the, hold some tension on to that needle. You're going to pull the needle out of the lower stitches and let those hang on there. Now we're going to knit across the top needle and we're going to use the two ends of this top needle. So I have a green needle on top. I'm going to use the other green tip to knit across these stitches. So when you're using the two circulars method in the round, uh, whatever stitches are on that needle, those are the two tips that you use to, to knit. Okay, so we've come to the end of the green needle. We're going to rotate so that it, this tip points in the other direction. And now we're going to pull that needle so the stitches are resting on um, that cable. And we're going to pull the other needle so that the other half of the round is sitting on that needle tip. We're going to get rid of this slip knot because it doesn't count as a stitch. Now we're going to use the other silver tip, other end of the same needle, in order to knit these st stitches across. Now with the figure eight cast on, the stitches that were cast on the lower needle are sitting in the opposite orientation that you're used to. The leading leg of the stitch is toward the tip, so we need to knit through the back of these stitches for this first round, only on the stitches that were cast on to the bottom needle. And when we get to the end, we're going to again knit through the top to or through the back of this twist last twisted loop here. And now we have finished. So now that we've completed one full round, we have one set of stitches between the two needles. Uh, from now on, every time we knit across one set of needles, we'll see a new row appear below or between the two sets of needles. So we've finished the first round. So we rotate the needles so they're pointed uh, to the right. Pull the bottom one out to rest. And now I'm going to pull the top one, pull the stitches onto the green needle so that I can now knit across. And I'm going to use the other end of the green needle in order to knit across these stitch stitches. So I have four swatches here. This one was knit using uh, the Turkish cast on, and I used size six needles for the entire thing. These three were knit using the Turkish cast on. I cast on with size six needles and used the size six needles for the entire swatch. For this, I used a size five needle for the cast on and then switched to a six for the rest of it. And with this one, I cast on using a size four needle, uh, and then I knit with a size six for the project. This swatch was cast on using the size six project needles, and you can see that enlarged row of stitches here. And if you look on the back, you can see a pretty obvious gutter between the stitches. For this swatch, I used a size five needle, and the stitches across here are still a little bit enlarged, and you can still see a gutter between the stitches. For this swatch, I used a size four needle, to cast on and then a size six for the rest of it. And it's much closer in size. In fact, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that there was any difference in size in that first row compared to the rest. Although if you look on the back, you can pull this apart a little bit and you can see um, that there is a gutter if you pull it apart. But if you just let it at rest, it's not too obvious. This is the swatch knit with the Turkish cast on. Looks pretty good. I think there might be a very slight, there is a very slight gutter here again. If you bend the stitches around, you can see that there's a little bit more of a gutter, but it's not terribly noticeable. You can correct the tension along that first row of stitches um, by starting at the end away from the tail and grad you can pull on each leg here from the front and adjust it if you want and get pretty close. I find it's actually easier to do that on the back side of the work because um, then I can see where that gutter is, and then I know for sure that I'm correcting the size. So I look at where the gutter is, and I pick, 
had one of those pro bumps that pull on it and I find the one across from it, you just pull a little, make sure you have the correct one. Pull out extra slack and work your way across. Now what you're going to see is that these are not, I'm not doing stitches, uh, bumps that are right next to each other, they're across from each other. So I'm pulling up on this one and then I'm gonna come down so you have the, the these two bumps that are adjacent, the upper and the lower. I'm gonna pull the lower one for this. And then I come up to this pair here, I'm gonna pull the upper one from this. So you're looking at two sets of pearl bumps. The lower one on the lower set, the upper one on the upper set. And again, if you just pull a little bit, you'll be able to see if they're actually connected. So when I get all the way across, I can see that I'm pulling on the tail, so then I can pull all of this excess slack out of the tail. That gutter is gone here, and then the stitches are all the same size on the front. There is an advantage to using two needles instead of one for a provisional cast on, whether it's the Turkish cast on or the figure eight cast on. For a closed cast on, whether you use one circular needle or two circs is a matter of preference. The advantages of the figure eight cast on when used as a provisional cast on are similar to the Turkish cast on. First, it's fairly easy cast on, and unlike many provisional cast on methods, there's no temporary edge of waste yarn to remove and no stitches to recapture. The stitches are already sitting on the needle, ready to be knitted or grafted or bound off. And finally, the stitch count is exactly what you need when working in the opposite direction. You aren't one stitch short as you can be with other provisional cast on methods. The advantage of the figure eight cast on as a closed cast on is that it is also, again, fairly easy, second only to the Turkish cast on. So what are the disadvantages? Well, like other cast on methods in this series, at least one circular needle is needed in order for the process to be easy. So if you weren't planning on using circular needles for your project and you don't have them in the correct size, this might be an issue. The cast on can be done using double pointed needles or straights, but it will be more difficult. Disadvantages specific to the figure eight cast on come from the way the yarn is wrapped around the needles to form the cast on stitches. The stitches on the bottom needle will be seated differently than normal and must be knit through the back in order to come off the needle untwisted. And because the yarn is wrapped completely around one of the needles in order to form a cast on stitch, more yarn is used to form the cast on stitches than with the Turkish cast on. So that first row or round of stitches is enlarged compared to the rest of the project. Now you can fix that first row of enlarged stitches by adjusting the tension stitch by stitch as I demonstrated but if your project has a large number of stitches, this takes all of the fun out of an easy cast on. You can use smaller needles for the cast on, and this is fairly easy to do if your project needles are in the mid to large range, but it requires that you have smaller needles. And if you're, if you're already using small needles, it may be a challenge to find some that are even smaller to use for the cast on. If you have any questions or comments about today's video or suggestions about videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or you can join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks, and there's a link to that down in the description box. Well, that's it for the figure eight cast on. Next week, I'll demonstrate Judy's magic cast on. You can watch that last week's video up here. And after next week's video is uploaded, you can see that one down here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.